All right, hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, we'll we'll uh, get started here with our webinar series. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today for part two of this webinar series, introducing the V4 system upgrade. We're really excited to have you here to present you with all the detailed look at our system. Uh, last time we went over the dashboard, scheduling reports. If you missed it or if you want to take a second look, the recording is available. So please let us know if you don't have that email. Uh, we'll definitely make it uh, available on our website uh, as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, we really wanted to make sure you feel comfortable with this system upgrade, but also get excited for all the updates coming your way, which is what we'll be going over today. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, housekeeping, uh, this will be recorded. We do have it available for you afterwards to watch and to share with anyone who's unable to attend. Also, the Q&A is open, so feel free to add any comments or questions throughout the session. After the webinar, we will compile all those and make sure to send them out to everyone who is registered. So to start, my name is Jacqueline Young. I am the marketing director here at eSafety, and I will be acting as moderator today. Our technology director, Jen Amelander, is here with us to give us an overview of some of those fun new features that we are going to be able to release with V4. So I know everyone's first question is, when is it going to be released? It is coming this summer. We will be providing a date as soon as we have that official um, that official release date, and it will be over a weekend. So hopefully that will help to minimize any impact for your organization and for for training. So Jen, I know I'm really excited about what we're talking about here today. Anything you'd like to start with before we get into it? Yeah, I am again so happy to be here sharing um, all of the hard items that we've been working on uh, behind the scenes here. And I'm really excited to go over some of the items today because we've been taking all of your feedback um, and we've been looking at ways to think really big about features that you love as well as how we can make eSafety work best for you. So that's what we're gonna go over a few of those today. Awesome. Uh, let me click over to our agenda here. And just so we kind of go over what to expect today, uh, we're going to go over expiration tracking. So this is a, when you think expiration tracking, we're specifically talking about certifications and licenses. This is a really great way for us to start introducing new types of content that you can manage through the system. We're also going to be going over content bundles and then user tagging. And so I am going to let uh, Jen take it away and get right into it. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and log in um, for everybody. Um, and where we're going to start is at expiration tracking. So we know that um, we've got some really fun tools coming out for our administrators. And uh, today what I'm going to do is kind of go over them very high level. Let me make sure I'm sharing my screen with everyone. Perfect. I was going to say, I think it was still on the agenda. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Let's go ahead and share that. So hopefully everybody's in my content area. I'll quick navigate back to my dashboard. Um, so kind of what we're going to do is we're going to go over a few things very high level today. Um, I only have 30 minutes to go over these. So as you know, with eSafety, we are going to provide you with a lot of support once this releases. Uh, so we're going to have an expanded help section with some additional tutorials. And then there, as always, there's your eSafety account rep. And as we get into the release of V4, um, we're going to really have uh, a lot of uh, information coming at you, both through emails, uh, tutorials, but to just reach out to your account rep and we'd love to go over uh, some of these with you one on one if that if that's what you'd like and how to kind of best use them. So we're going to start with what you can add to eSafety. Again, we have shifted that terminology. If you were not on the first webinar, um, what you were used to in the current system is course list. We've now um, kind of transitioned that to content. Uh, and the reason for that is this is now more than just courses. Um, and so just a quick little recap here. This list will go over all of your eSafety courses that are available to you as part of your library. 
any custom courses that you and your organization have added to eSafety, as well as, as you can see here, if you are part of that um, unlimited library, you're going to get toolbox talks added directly into your content list, um, and you'll be able to schedule those out right through eSafety. Um, and then we're also adding in licenses and certification for expiration tracking. So there is that little content summary. The color um, of the list item will relate to those as well. So there is a little bit of color coding that's that's going on. So what I'm going to do is just kind of open up this modal and and go over this for just a quick second. Um, with the current system, you are used to a few different ways to add courses into eSafety. One of them is through our eSafety course builder. And if you're not familiar with it, it is a way where you can use templates to create an HTML course, uh, text images. You can link to videos that are hosted on YouTube or Vimeo. A lot of great um, tools that create a really awesome seamless way for your end users to watch content. So that is still there. Create a course is where we would do that. You still have the ability to upload files into eSafety for training, uh, you, you know, PowerPoints, PDFs, Word documents, everything that you're used to uploading, still there. Um, but you're seeing the addition of upload SCORM. So we're gonna go ahead and give administrators the ability to upload a SCORM 1.2 file directly into eSafety. If you've got content that you're, uh, organization creates, or if you're getting content elsewhere, you're going to go ahead and be able to upload that directly into eSafety right here. All of these are set around how your users uh, complete them, right? These are going to be scheduled with due dates, and your users are going to need to complete them uh, in order to track that uh, completion status. Licenses and certifications are going to be looking at expiration tracking. And so what we're going to do is say, hey, we need to have this and we're going to track whether we're in good standing, if we're expiring soon or if we're expired. So really, really cool. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and click on this uh, only because I've already created one. So but this is how we're going to add it to the system. And just like a course, um, you're going to add the entity and then we're going to schedule that entity. So I'm going to go ahead and filter my list here quick a second for the ones that I have available to me. And you can see they're blue. I have three of them um, that I've already created, but I'm going to kind of just use uh, one of them a quick second. So I'm going to pop into the forklift and you're going to see this is kind of just the basic information around it. Um, and what we can do once it's created is say, hey, I have particular users that I need to track this and this item for. And so just like we would schedule a course to users, we can schedule the fact that we need to be tracking this. So there are four people that were scheduled to have this. Um, to create a schedule for a, um, a license or a certificate is the same way as scheduling for a course. We're gonna pick the who, right? I'll just select this just so I can get through it. And you'll notice that this was already selected, forklift license. So in that content list, you'll have all of these items available to you. What you will notice is different is there is no due date there's no start showing or end showing. We're just saying this is required, and then we're going to track its status at any given time. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. Um, so these are the four users that I'm tracking this for. And so once we have a schedule and the system knows that we need to be tracking this and we want to keep an eye on it, well, then we can have records added in. Um, one other item it used to be called manual scores. We've kind of shifted the name of it over to records manual entry. Um, and the reason for that is because now it's not just a score that you can enter into the system. We could be picking something else. So you can do this from within the entity or the license itself, or we can do this in the user profile, just like you're used to doing currently. But I'm going to go ahead and click records, and you can see I already have one, um, and I'll add another one just to kind of show you the process. But what we're going to do is track when it was acquired, when it expires, and a, a license number, as well as maybe who provided this. You know, if this is a qualified trainer, we're gonna, we can write down who that person was and, and track that. And we can see that the status for this is good. It doesn't expire until April 26. In order to um, add a new one to the system, this is something that at launch, we are going to leave at the administrative level. Um, so as an admin, you're going to be able to add this. What we're gonna do is select a user. I'm gonna go ahead right here. We're gonna select a user and we're just gonna mark when was this acquired? When does this expire? Let's put this one three years out. Um, 
we these are not required fields we don't have to add them but you can upload a file and if i go ahead and pick a file that i want to use here i have an example we can go ahead and hit upload and we can save and we're all set and we've created that manual entry and now it's tracked in the system so what does that look for your look like for your end user right so because i am logged in as max scale i'm going to go to my end user profile and when an end user logs in, they're going to see if there's something that they're that they're they're required to have completed. They're going to see it's either in one of these four statuses. Now, again, they're not the one that can upload this. This is just for information sake for them, but they have one in good standing. They can always go right to their records list and see what it is that it's in good standing. So very, very cool. Um, as we mentioned right now, they are not going to be able to upload and enter this information on their own. We are going to give that to the admins uh, from the get go but not saying we can't open that up down the road. So I am gonna head back to the dashboard. And one other thing you'll notice here is if I do have something that's gonna be expiring soon, it's gonna come right over here to my needs attention area. Um, and hey, within 30 days, this is expiring. You do have the ability to set on each individual item, how far in advance this is gonna notify you. So it could be 30, it could be 60, it could be 90, depending on what it is and when you need to be notified, you also will get a, this will go directly to the report that lets you know, hey, this, this one's expired for this user. So that is really kind of where we're at when it comes to expiration tracking. Awesome. No, and I know that for those of you who do track expirations for licenses or certifications, uh, we just really hope that this brings all that management of those items into one system for you. Uh, so everyone who has, you know, paper or a whiteboard with a big chart in your office. Uh, we wanted to, you know, to just have a place to manage all this. Uh, so something I noticed when you were kind of going through the content area was a tab for bundles. So now that uh, um, the only type of course bundling we have right now is for new hire. So everyone who's using new hire training, this is where we're going to bring in and start talking about bundles. Uh, but that's a very specific thing that, you know, is for users, anything you're taking prior to jumping into your regular schedules. And we, I know we wanted to give you a better way to manage that as well as take the opportunity to expand it and give you more options. So Jen, can you show us what the new hire bundle looks like and then how else they can use this feature beyond new hire? Absolutely. Um, so you'll kind of get familiar with this on, on many of the pages, but you'll notice that your areas will have tabs within them. And so I'm just going to pop into the content bundles tab and you'll see that I have two content bundles uh, currently set up and one of them is a new hire bundle. Um, this is an area that we've gotten lots of feedback with um, in the current version of eSafety. And we thought, hey, how can we expand on this? How can we make it better? So if you are using new hire, it's going to seamlessly transition over and you will find it here in your bundles list once the transition happens to v4 so it will look very similar to this um, we know that in the current version you kind of have to go a few different places to manage your new hire courses and we're really trying to make a um, you know one-stop shop for managing this type of thing so we've kind of called it bundles. Um, and let me just kind of give you an idea of what that is. So um, I have one for supervisor and I have one for my new hire right now. And I'm just going to quick pop in here just to show you. You can see the courses that are a part of this bundle and it's got its little graduation cap. It gets an icon. But because now you have more than one, we are going to give you more than one icon. Uh, so you'll see that there could be, there's five pieces of content in the supervisor, but let's just go ahead and create another new one. So let's go ahead and do um, I'm gonna go ahead and make one for emergency responders and let's go ahead and give it the shield um, as its icon and we'll just go ahead and hit save. Pretty simple. And now we get to pick the content that we want associated. In the current system, we know that you now would have to go to the course list and pick each one individually and go through it. No, we're just going to go ahead and give you a single ad form. Um, I want them all at the top level. You still have that ability to select, hey, a, a particular level might have something more specific. You can do that by selecting down. I'm going to leave them all right here. Let's go ahead and do basic first aid and basic first aid. Let's do bloodborne and 
investigation. So we're just going to give it four courses. And I don't know if you noticed, but we're trying to do quite a bit of this where you can just type and find your courses. We know some of our clients have very long course lists um, where you've added hundreds and hundreds of custom courses to our system. So trying to make that a little easier for you um, when you're trying to manage or add content to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. You'll notice it all gets added right here into my bundle. And now we have a bundle for emergency responders. Now where this really comes into play, right? So we created it. That's great. Um, where this comes into play is when we want to schedule content out um, and when we want to report on it, right? So this group of courses is kind of linked together. If we're always scheduling the group of courses, and this could be, you can mix custom courses and e-safety courses. You can mix any type of content together into this bundle. It is not courses alone. Um, but what we're going to do is when you come in to create a schedule, you can click who you want to schedule for, right? Let's just pick a department. We're going to pick who we want to schedule for. And you could always just click through all your courses. You have a lot of them. We've given you the search bar so that hopefully, you know, we make this a little bit easier by giving you, hey, I'm searching for custom. Here's my four custom. But we could also use our bundles and we could say, yeah, I want my emergency responder bundles to go to HR. I know that that doesn't necessarily make sense. I'm just using it as an example. Um, go ahead and hit continue. Give it, the, again, all four courses that are part of that bundle are gonna get these same dates that I would select here as part of my scheduling form. This should all look very familiar. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And now we've scheduled that content that is part of that particular bundle to a particular department, which is really cool. Um, and you'll see now we have a bundle summary. We have four schedules that are applicable under that particular bundle. So it just kind of gets added. You're gonna see the icon, you know, that's just how it's going to look on the scheduling list. The one other area that this is going to kind of become beneficial, hopefully for you, is in the reporting. Um, and one thing I just want to quick mention, because I do know I have to be a little quick on time today, and I, so I'm just going to give you this heads up, is when you're looking at your sorts, and I'm going to use completion status here, not only are you going to be able to sort by user course you're going to be able to let's see if i can get my page to go down you'll be able to sort by the bundle and that way you'll be able to group things by that bundle and say hey here's how everybody who has that bundle is doing the items in this bundle everybody's sitting at 100 percent on so trying to expand the way that you guys uh, can look at and group information within e-safety so awesome awesome so yeah, the big thing here again, just to kind of wrap up what Jen is saying is the the fact that we've made changes to streamline the process. So more, no more step one, step two, each individual course, you got to click that button and make it a new higher course. Now you can add multiple pieces of content right into that bundle in that area, so much easier to manage. Uh, and you can do this again for new hire related training as well as that ongoing group training that needs to be completed and reported on together. So this is a really big, um, nice addition to what we can do for scheduling for you. So, and I do want to yes. hold on. I want to quick pop in. One thing I don't think I mentioned, but I think is worth saying is that new hire bundles are still given to the user when you're adding through their user profile. That yes. does still kind of keep them different. We're tracking that as uh, very specific to that person in a specific time frame. So that is why on that schedule form, you notice the new hire one didn't exist. But that is that remains the same. You will apply that to them in their user profile. So yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna set you up for success. So for instance, that little graduation cap can only be used for new hire. You can have your one new hire training that again, because you can add them at those different levels, you can have your company requirements, your department requirements. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep that as straightforward for you. Bring over all the things you loved about it from V3 and then give you more options and a little bit more flexibility in V4. So uh, good, very good thing to note uh, for sure, Jen. So um, now that we've talked about, you know, the types of content, we've talked about bundling content. One of the other things and the last feature we're going to talk about and touch on today is user tagging. So the big thing here is the fact that you can now group users outside of your level structure. <laughs> So Jen, this is this is a big thing. I know this is something that a lot of our admins have asked us about before. Like, what if someone kind of belongs in two different places? So can you show us what this is the best way for them to use this feature, how it's going to be helpful for their training needs? Absolutely. And this is a really fun one. Um, 
at, you're so right. We have gotten so many questions about how can I put somebody in two levels at the same time? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. <laughs> um, and that will remain. We're still going to keep our level structure. Um, and you can schedule to a level and it's it's its own entity. You can manage levels on their own. A level can have a you know, schedule, it can do all these things. Um, but we wanted to give you another way to group them. And so what our user tags are, and you'll notice that tags are in more than just the user list. So you are gonna get these a few places, but what user tags are, are just customizable labels that you can um, create and then attach to users, right? So um, we're gonna, st I'm gonna start off by saying that we are going to leave the management or the creation of tags at the organizational level. So the highest level admins in your organization are the ones that can create new tags or edit a tag, but any admin that has the ability to manage users within their little sphere of influence can add those tags to any user. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because we don't need 17 administration tags <laughs> within an organization. We, we do want to keep that um, as minimal as possible um, for any of that, the duplicates. Um, but as you can see here, um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create another tag and then kind of show you what this looks like. Um, so let's go ahead and create a tag and you can see we have two already supervisor is a tag. We hear that one a lot. We hear a lot of people like, Hey, I just want to be able to tag my supervisors. They belong in every single level. Um, but I just, I need to be able to quickly pull them out and maybe treat them a little bit different in reporting or, or, you know, in a schedule. So I'm using supervisor. I've got forklift operator. Let's go ahead and do um we'll just go ahead and create this we have an emergency responder tag now we have no users who are associated with it at the moment because i just created it but let's go ahead and create a couple users and, and or um add a user to this tag so um let's just say waylon waylon can have um, emergency responder and we're just going to go ahead and tag him and now you can see that he's associated with this tag right here we will list out all of the tags that each user is associated with um and then there's this tag summary on the left hand side so in your kind of summary bar area so right now we have one emergency responder we have two forklift operators and we have three supervisors um, we can use our filters to quickly filter the list if i want to say hey who are my forklift operators oh we can see it's john and justin um, really quick way to look at users a little different outside of their level structure. Now let's look at where this really comes into play. Okay. And that's going to be in the schedule and reports. Again, filtering list quickly for you. Um, so in the schedule form, you've noticed I have tags over here. And instead of going ahead and using my user list and coming through and selecting my individual users, this one's pretty manageable. I think there's only 26 or 27 employees in this list. We know that that's not the case for a lot of our clients. What you'll be able to do is swap this over to tags and we can say, hey, I want to select the three users who are associated with this tag right? Um, so it's still going to be giving them the schedule at the user level, but it's automatically going to say, hey, if they're tagged with supervisor, we're going to give those three users the schedule. And we'll give you the indication of how many are going to get assigned something. So you would follow the process through the same way you did before, and you can use content or bundles in order to do that. So I'm going to cancel out of that for a second. We don't need to add more schedules to the system. Um, the other really big um, benefit of using user tags is going to be in your reports. And just like we saw on the schedule form, we can come over here and say, you know what? I really want a supervisor report. I want this report. I'm going to save it as, go ahead and actually stay in the, the form. Um, And now I have a saved report that only has those users selected on it. And so I can run this report over and over and over, and it will always have those users that are associated with that particular tag as the users that are coming out on this report, which is just a wonderful uh, little tip for you or like a little trick for you guys. Um, I do think that it's going to be really beneficial um, for those groups of users that 
maybe we don't want to give them their own department or level because they don't necessarily need it, but I do need to look at them differently um, in my reports and maybe when I'm creating schedules. So that's really what user tags um, are all about. Now, I will go ahead and say the big difference between creating a schedule for a level versus creating a schedule for um, you know the users associated with the tag is we can still schedule to you know the HR department. And if you come and go from HR, that schedule will come and go as well. If we schedule to three users, that schedule will follow you around. So it is a schedule to the users who belong to that tag. So just wanted to kind of make sure that we do talk about the difference, but we're really excited about this. And I think that it's gonna save a lot of our admins a lot of time within eSafety. Awesome. awesome. Yes, yeah. so this, like Jen said, tags at its core for these user tags, they are customizable labels. This is a way to give you um, a way to find the users faster. We are not doing anything to the tag. We're not assigning things to the tag. We are scheduling or pulling report on those users that are associated with the tag that have the tag on them. So for those of you who need to find users or you know that are across different locations or different departments, this should be a, a great solution for you. Uh, Jen, anything else on tags or um, the content area? Otherwise we can kind of go back to the dashboard, take a look at that one last time here we are actually wrapping up so i want to make sure we can kind of show again the fact that you've got all these different content types but we're going to show you in a glance you know what needs your attention um, and i know that we've i'm going off script here but we went back and forth on how do we want to show these things do people want to see them in different buckets and really it was hey are we doing well what's done what's not done and so we really were trying to think from your seat as the admin what's going to help you you know answer questions quicker when it comes to this dashboard all right well with that let me uh grab the screen i'm gonna bring it back over to uh to my presentation here um but just to kind of end here today to wrap up, uh, first of all, Jen, thank you <laughs> for giving us that high level overview of the new features that we're most excited about. And we know these are things you, our admins have been asking for as well. So we really focused on giving you more ways to add training content to the system, uh, new tools to manage users and content. But most importantly, we're going to do it in a way that makes it easy to use and easy to administer. So if you have any questions about what you saw today, please reach out to your eSafety rep. If you didn't join us last time, um, one, please keep an, e an eye out for our emails. Make sure that you're watching for updates as we get closer to announcing that release date. And specifically, we will be sending you uh, information and an info sheet on our password requirements for V4. So. We want to make sure everyone's ready to go uh, and hit the ground running when we're able to launch V4 for you. Uh, with that, we really we just can't thank you enough. We love working with you and we're very excited to be bringing you all of these updates and upgrades to a lot of the great features that we know you want to see more from. So we will leave this session live. Uh, for another few minutes. If you have any last questions, feel free to add them. Uh, we really look forward to your feedback and how we can just make this a successful transition for you into all of these wonderful features. So enjoy the rest of your day. Again, we'll leave the chat live for a little bit longer and thank you.